Hey, Mike here, AKA The Cloud Coach. Welcome to part five of our Terraform Crash Course 2019. In this part, we're gonna be creating an Elastic IP, an SSH key, and an AMI. The next step in getting that what little bit closer to our EC2 instance, which is coming in the sixth part. So let's get straight on with it. So what are we creating? We're creating another resource block. It's gonna be an AWS EIP. We're just going to call it now web server. Yeah, let's call it web server. Let's, let's change the name up a little bit. Now, we're going to do something now qu quite interesting. Uh, we're going to effectively break our code. I'm going to show you why. So we're going to attach this EIP to an instance, okay? AWS instance, and we're going to call the instance web server. Kind of match it up with the EIP ID. All right, we're going to say it's an, e uh, an EIP that's going to exist within a VPC. Okay, and we're also going to add a depends on block. Okay, and we're going to say that this resource within Terraform actually depends upon the internet gateway called main. We're going to say if this if this doesn't exist, well, this can't exist neither because it depends on it and it does indeed actually depend on it. For those of you that may be keeping an eye on things, you might notice that that AWS instance hasn't been created yet, and it's not actually gonna be created in this part, it's gonna be created in part six where we create the EC2 instance. So it'll be interesting to see what happened, right? What we also need for our EC2 instance is we need an SSH key, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get an, S an AWS key pair. Okay, we're just gonna call it default all right we're going to give it a name which is the name actually within um, actually within AWS itself so I'm just going to call it uh, TCC SSH key okay the cloud coach SSH key and then we're going to need our public underscore key and this is a string right um, and that's now going to get attached to our EC2 instance which is going to allow us and it's going to allow us to actually be able to connect to the actual system over SSH, but we need just one more resource. All EC2 instances are gonna need an AMI, an, an, an Amazon machine image in order to be able to operate. So we're gonna call ours, we're gonna go fetch one, right? But we're gonna call it Ubuntu. But look at this. This is actually gonna be data, not resource, not resource. So a data block, a data type is telling Terraform not to create something, but go out and fetch information about something. And in this case, it's an, an AWS AMI. All right, so I'm gonna fill this in and then talk about what the details look like. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna fill it in and then I'm gonna fast forward. Okay, so we fast forwarded there and as you can see, like magic or data, AWS AMI Ubuntu block is filled out. So what are we what are we doing here? So we've got two filters. We're filtering on the name and the virtualization type. So we're saying, hey, the name of the AMI should match Ubuntu slash images slash HVM SSD, Ubuntu Bionic 1804, AMD 64 server, and we put a wildcard at the end. Okay. We're also saying that the virtualization type is HVM, which is the latest virtualization type within AWS. You don't really need to worry about that too much. Just make sure it matches H HVM. We're also saying we want the very latest image so that whatever results it finds if it finds say six results just give us whatever the latest one is okay and more importantly we're also saying that the ami should be owned by this account and that account is the public account that owns the ami and is managed by canonical themselves and they are the people that actually create and maintain ubuntu so we're telling we're telling terraform hey i'm going to need those details from this account I'm gonna need an AMI from this account that matches this virtualization type, that image. Or Terraform validate, whoops. Reference the undeclared resource, okay? AWS instance web server.id, it doesn't exist. Okay, and that's where part six comes in. So thanks for watching this part. In the next part, we're actually gonna create our instance and then we're gonna do an apply and we'll see all of this come together to eventually give us an EC2 instance with an IP address that we're gonna SSH into and then in the seventh part, we're going to destroy it and have a look at a few more details. See you then.